We're using that bar or this bar over here? Uh, Doesn't matter. The, the, the ones with the red tape yeah, the let's, standard 45. Let's, uh, let's show people um, a, an exercise that we were taught when we were trainers. Not to that do. you should never oh, do. Oh, <laughs> it's the absolute worst thing ever. You should never do a shoulder press behind the head. That's what we were taught. Well, first, before you uh, slam them for that, there's a reason for that. We've mentioned it on the, the show before. Yes. That you know, whenever you, the certifications that talk about the 90 degrees and not going through full range of motion is, it's always like a safety thing, right? Like, they know that a majority of the people don't have the shoulder mobility to be able to put a bar behind that. So they're, they're always gonna uh, speak from what's safest, right? And that's just it. It's, uh, uh, is it more dangerous to do it behind the neck than it is to do it in front? Yes, but can you work up to a point where you get good shoulder mobility, where you can do this with proper form, good tension, good control? Absolutely. Yes. And something that changed my mind a long time ago, because I used to never do this, right? I was always like, never do it behind the neck. Then I saw a video with uh, Mario uh, Puchanowski, world's strongest man. And he had like 300 pounds on his traps, and he would do the squat press and then bring it back down, squat press. And I couldn't believe how he was doing this. And I thought to myself, He's got, I mean, obviously he's not hurting him, right. and it can't be because he's so massive. Eventually he'd end up hurting himself, that was a problem. Well, you're but in Olympic that lifter... position when you're doing a backloaded squat to begin with, so you're super protract or retracted already to yeah, begin with. So. exactly, and Olympic lifters do these all the time to help them with their snatches, right? They right. like to, to have exactly. this position. So, uh, so let me demo this exercise, and then yeah. we'll take it from there. I like to, personally, if I'm doing a press to the front of my body, my, my grip's usually a little more narrow, Behind the neck, I tend to go a little wider. I don't know about you guys, mm -hmm. but I found that a little bit of a wider grip for behind the neck is a little well, bit Well, it resembles a lot of, like I said, my back-loaded squat. That's usually okay. where my hand position is okay. for the, so I'll get behind the, bar, the neck press. Press it straight up, and what I'm gonna do with good posture, and now I'm not tucking my head forward to clear my head. I'm staying nice and tall. I'm gonna come down behind the head, and I like to come all the way down till I almost touch the traps, and then press it all the way back up, nice and tall. Some people, a lot of people won't have the mobility to be able to do it this way. So I say practice with your mobility. So if it's right here and you're starting to feel like things are twisting and don't feel right, then stay within there for a second. But the goal should be to go light and be able to get this and real tall. And watch the compensations that tend to occur, like you get an excessive motion. forward head, you right. get too much arch in the back. Yeah, you actually have, all these you have really things. good mechanics. I'm yeah. glad you demoed this because I didn't want to demo because really? when you come down, yeah, come down, I'll show you my deviation. My wrist break right here. Oh, right. really? Right. Yeah, I have to do this. In, oh, exactly. in order to get my bar yeah. behind my head and clear, I have to break my wrist. No, but you have I, really good form. He's got yeah, a I nice tight fist that he's pressing I'm, straight I'm up. I'm squeezing my shoulder blades back, keeping it nice and tall. Something else I like to do is I like to come down with really light weight, so even just the bar. I'll come all the way down. I'll set it on my traps, but I don't rest it. Yeah. I'm setting it there and staring tight, right. and then I press it straight up. That's what I'll do. I'll come all the way down to my traps when you come down there, and then I'll put emphasis on the that yep. squeezing and retracting that scapula right here before I go right back. And you're right pulling it down too. You're not just letting it fall back into place. Like everything is super intentional, keeping tension and maintaining it so that way nothing gets out of control. Exactly. So for most common mistake I see, so if you guys have other ones, make sure we point out. Most common mistake I see when people do this is when they when they grab this bar to do that press, do an overhead press, they do this. Looking up, looking oh, no. up uh -huh. at the bar when they when they press up, and arching that low back when yeah. they press. So no, when you complete the press, Adam, but do it properly. Go yeah. ahead and show. Yeah. It. So press it up. So you'll notice that that's it. So you'll see here. This is a nice straight line. Right. Tight core, chest high, head straight. You already want to be in line with your ears to behind it. Yes. So you're straight up to the side of your. And head. if you can't do that, if you have trouble with that. Go really, really light, do one arm exercises. I like to teach my clients with, a one, with one dumbbell and have them practice coming up and just being real nice and tall with that, with that, that press, try and get that straight line. So another thing that I do, and I know that uh, we always talk about the benefits of standing, 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 and we're, we're kind of anti sitting on a bench all the time. But when I am working on shoulder mobility, uh, sitting at a 90 degree bench, you'll see me do this sometimes. So I'll sit down at a 90 degree bench where I, I can get comfortable on a bench and that way I can just really concentrate on that because having to stabilize on the ground, stand, stand upright, activate your core and press behind your head, it's a lot of stuff going on. Ideally, it's the best, but sometimes for somebody to help 
regress this a little bit yeah. is I'll take them onto a 90 degree bench. Should take the rest of the body out of it and yes. get that mobility. Yeah, they're supported with the bench. They don't have to stabilize on the ground as much anymore. They have that bench to support them. The core's not having to work so much. Your core and your posture, a lot more challenging here. This is by far more beneficial, but to regress the movement, taking them on. And that's and to me, that's like when we talk about like where do, where do benches and sitting down, where do these type of movements come into play? Here's an example where that would come into play. I would regress somebody that's having a hard time with stabilizing the weight over their head. And I can see it. Practice yeah, and like Sal mentioned, like just focusing on one arm at a time and just really noticing, okay, here's where we need to work on range of motion wise. And, and get real missing. tall. And re here's a nice little gem. Here's something I have clients do sometimes before they do a standing shoulder press to help them get that mobility. It's a real easy movement. Place your elbows on the bar, hands behind the head, step back, and then press through with the, with the chest. Press through with the chest and stay tight here. And this is a good primer before you do your press. So you could do this position, get, real, get some nice extension through the thoracic, Come just up, pressing your body nice weight into exactly. it. Exactly, then get the, up and well, press anytime it, I'm doing any sort of, track the anytime I'm doing back. any pressing, my I'm always doing band pull aparts and dislocates yes. before I start, just because that's going to get all this back yeah. here firing and activated, so you can get into that position. If you come straight into a shoulder press, a chest press, any pressing movement without any sort of a warm up or primer before. Uh, you're kind of asking for it to be challenging. You're kind of asking for injury that you're way. Not recruiting the you have to work through the yeah. aches and pains where, yeah, let's get nice circulation, let's get nice connectivity there going into the lift. Exactly. So behind the neck press, it's if, fine. You if can you do it. You got the mobility to do it, it's an excellent movement. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have the mobility to do work it, your, towards it, your goal is to work towards That's it. it. Exactly.